Hi, I'm Grace Lacanti, the strategic risk expert, and I've introduced the SWOT analysis to you, but today I would like to tell you about the super SWOT. So this is the next step after you have a basic list of strengths, opportunities, or st <laughs> strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. S-W-O-T. Why would you do a super SWOT? Well, if you've already started with a SWOT analysis, which is a basic strategic planning tool to make good decisions about your practice or your business, then the next step is to figure out kind of a combination of what's working and what's not. It can provide you with additional insights, it can give you some information that you hadn't seen before, and it can also provide um, kind of more measurable ways to look at your data um, if you've done qualitative and quantitative, which I recommend, both how you feel about things and how people interact with you, and also the specific data that you can measure, turnover, AR, profit margins, uh, visit, uh, number of visits per day and per month, other things that we can actually look at on graphs, then you can combine this and come up with a list of each of these different things. All of the strengths that your practice has, things that are going well, all the things that are not going well and how you're not achieving your strategic objectives. Outside opportunities and um, the pastel list of political, environmental, um, social, and other types of um, marketplace changes and shifts that could impact your company and threats that could really make your company fail, which we don't want those to happen. So really briefly, here is a combination of a lot of different clients I've worked with um, it's not one particular company, but all of these are actually real examples. So for strengths, we have client relationships are strong. We have service growth, which means the types of services that are being offered are expanding. Uh, the practitioner has great qualifications and she's gone back to get more training so that she's really sought after now. And I don't recommend this, but she offers low prices, which I'll be getting into in a second because that's actually really important for this particular practice. So. The weaknesses of this practice are, first, internal processes are not efficient. That's one of the main reasons people come to me, because they feel like their processes are out of control, they don't know how to get things back in order, and it's very frustrating and confusing, and ah, you just feel like everything's falling apart. Um, also high AR, so accounts receivable buckets are in the 90 to 120 plus days, which means that you're not paid when you should. You're not charging up front. Maybe insurance denials are a headache, so you ignore them. You aren't chasing up on billing. And all of that can just generate a tremendous amount of headaches and really bad cash flow, which has an impact on just about every other part of your business. Um, unclear value proposition. What do we do and why? I'm not sure. You know, what is it that customers come to you for? Uh, because I'm nice, because they like what I do. Well, but why? What's the real reason? With my clients, in my initial client interest form, I ask them how they found me and why they decided to even ask me for help. Because answering that question gives you an insight into what it is that makes you different than everyone else out there who's doing what you do. Also, negative ratings. They're starting to see some one-star reviews, and if that's from an anonymous source, it's even harder to respond to. It can be embarrassing, it can be a shock, but unfortunately that's the world we live in. For opportunities, external things that could potentially generate a lot more uh, value and money for you. So, for this client it was, they're getting more interest. More people are emailing, calling them, visiting their website, finding them on social media. Televisits, so they have this opportunity to provide services with consultations across state lines. Now, if this is something that you can do and you feel comfortable communicating with patients like I'm doing right now, then this could be a really great potential growth opportunity for your company. It doesn't work for every type of service. I mean, if you're, for example, if you have body work, chiropractic, aromatherapy, it's a little harder, but it's still possible. You can still provide consultations at a really um, competitive high rate and provide a lot of value, even if you're not physically with your patient. Another is podcasts and articles. 
I've had a few clients that have been asked to join a regular podcast or radio show, and it's a great opportunity for them to promote what they do and talk about solving problems. Writing articles is great too because you're creating content that can stay out on the internet and connect people with you. And a niche market, I just think niching is the best. It narrows your focus. It causes people to find you more more easily. Um, it doesn't get distracting and you can make more money because people are going to find you to solve a particular problem rather than going to the dozens of other, you know, everything is for everything for everyone types of practitioners. It's a great thing to do. I have an article written about it that I'll link to below. Weaknesses. Oh, we've already done that. Threats. What are things from the outside that could cause harm? Negative news reports. When's the latest thing about integrative health problems and bad outcomes and deaths from from naturopathic healing and holistic practices? There are quite a lot of those coming out. Uh, less disposable income, debt load, and outdated technology. So these are just some examples of what a SWOT analysis would have. Now when we combine them, we get strengths with opportunities. We get strengths with threats. We get weaknesses with opportunities and weaknesses with threats. So let's take these and combine them. If we take the practitioner qualification, combine it with the podcast and article, what a great combo. If this practitioner has an unusual background with great experience and knowledge in a certain area, then there's a lot of content that that person can provide through a podcast, articles, or other content creation that most practitioners cannot do. Um, let's try another one, the client relationships and televisits. If you have a knack for creating great, strong relationships with people in person and you're not afraid to try something new, then you could consider serving patients that aren't in your geographic area. And by doing this, you are taking one of your strengths and combining it with an opportunity. So you can see how this works, right? All right, let's try strengths with threats. Um, let's just say that the low price with the uh, debt load. Right there, we've got a major problem, don't we? And in the next segment of this, I'll be talking about how to weigh these, the, the problems that you can see more clearly when you add a weighted element. But Low price with debt load is right away, flashing red light, boom, 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 because you can't make more money if you have a low cost and you're not generating any more of those visits. You only have so many hours in the day and your debt load is gonna be screaming. So that could actually impact how people feel about you. In fact, let's try one from weaknesses and threats. Let's say negative ratings and debt load. For that one, the negative ratings could be coming from people who are feeling this compulsive, fast-moving, kind of overly aggressive energy. Um, if you're trying to talk people into your service because you're so concerned about not having enough cash flow, then they might feel that energy and rate you poorly, even if they don't tell you to your face. This is why I encourage every leader to accept and encourage bad news. I call it bad news, but it really means anything that's unpleasant to hear. So it could be reviews, experiences, how people feel about you. If you're welcoming that, even though it's painful to hear, there's a less likely chance that you're going to have these random negative ratings out there from people who dislike you so much that they won't tell you in person, they won't write it on the card, but they will make it show up on a one-star review, you know? Let's try another one. Weaknesses with opportunities. So each of these, you need to combine all of them. Strengths and opportunities. The strengths with threats. The weaknesses and opportunities. And the weaknesses and threats. So when you do all of these, then you'll start to see some really interesting patterns come out. Let's take inefficient processes and niche market. If you have inefficient processes and you're starting to look at how to niche or make a more specific value um, of service for a particular group of 
ideal patients or ideal customers, then those processes are going to become more efficient because you can suddenly see the few things you need to do to get the patient to get the most value. So the, this is just an example of how to combine the SWOT analysis with kind of this next level. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them below or contact me at laconticonsulting.com and subscribe if you want to hear more of these videos. I look forward to hearing from you soon.